Hi, welcome along to another video. This week going to do a bit of a mixture of current information and some recent past information. As always, links to the articles are in the information section of this video. And coming up at the end, there's some links to some YouTube video clips if you want something to watch. Classic stuff if you like. We'll start on the European Parliament website from 1999 with a report on the environment, security and foreign policy it's from the Committee on Foreign Affairs, Security and Defence Policy. You may be familiar with this document, you may not be. 22 years old, done a search for the word harp and gets a mention first off with having regard to the hearing on harp and non-lethal weapons held by the Foreign Affairs Subcommittee on Security and Disarmament in Brussels on the 5th of February 1998. So the tail end of last, last century. Harp is well on the radar. No pun intended. It's also mentioned here. Whereas, despite the existing conventions, military research is ongoing on environmental manipulation as a weapon. As demonstrated, for example, by the Alaska-based Harp system. Legal aspects of military activities, they're considering HARP, the High Frequency Active Rural Research Project. Oh, I always thought it was Highly Active Anally re Retentive Project. Oh, so they consider HARP, by virtue of its far-reaching impact on the environment, to be a global concern. So basically they complain about the United States administration not sending anyone to the hit public hearing to have a chat about HARP. In Alaska and they call for commissions to investigate. HARP, a weapon system which disrupts the climate. On 5th February 1998 Parliament's Subcommittee on Security and Disarmament held a hearing the subject of which included HARP. NATO and the US had been invited to send representatives but chose not to do so. The committee regrets the failure of the USA to send a representative to answer questions or to use the opportunity to comment on the material submitted. So keep in mind this is from the time when it was in the possession of the US Air Force and Navy, which it no longer is. It's purely in the um, University of Fairbanks, Alaska, in their hands nowadays. But it's a weapon system which disrupts the climate. But that's okay. Give it to a uni. They'll have fun, won't they? They touch on the tech, what it is. Harp can be used for many purposes. Enormous quantities of energy can be controlled by manipulating the electrical characteristics of the atmosphere. If used as a military weapon, this can have a devastating impact on an en enemy. Harp can deliver millions of times more energy to a given area than any other conventional transmitter. The energy can also be aimed at a moving target, which should constitute a potential anti-missile system, or anti-UFO system, or down an aeroplane system. From the 1950s, the USA conducted explosions of nuclear material in the Van Allen belts to investigate the effect of the electromagnetic pulse generated by nuclear weapon explosions at these heights on radio communications and the operation of radar. This created new magnetic radiation belts which covered nearly the whole Earth. The electrons travelled along magnetic lines of force and created an artificial aurora borealis above the North Pole. These military tests are liable to disrupt the Van Allen belt for a long period. The Earth's magnetic field could be disrupted over large areas, which would obstruct radio communications. According to US scientists, it could take hundreds of years for the Van Allen belt to return to normal. HARP could result in changes in weather patterns. It could also influence whole ecosystems, especially in the sensitive Antarctic regions. So sidestepping from HARP for a second, nuclear explosions in the Van Allen belts which have affected the magnetic field around the Earth 
it has affected them. It's created a new magnetic radiation belt which covers nearly the whole Earth and it could take hundreds of years for it to return to normal. That was in the 1950s, so you look in the late 23rd, the late 22nd century, early 23rd century, before it's possibly returning to normal, which we won't know until we get there, and then they can have a look at it and say, yeah, it's completely returned to normal, or no, it's actually completely gone wrong. Interesting experiment. Did you know you was taking part in that, all you older people? Another damaging consequence of HARP is the occurrence of holes in the ionosphere caused by powerful radio beams. The ionosphere protects us from incoming cosmic radiation. The hope is that the holes will fill again, but our experience of change in the ozone layer points in the other direction. This means substantial holes in the ionosphere that protect us. With its far-reaching impact on the environment, HARP is a matter of global concern, and we have to ask whether its advantages really out outweigh the risks. The environmental impact and the ethical aspect must be closely examined before any further research and testing takes place. Crucial information. 20 odd years ago, HARP is a project of which the public is almost completely unaware and this needs to be remedied. Okay, so 20 odd years ago, hardly anyone's heard about it. This needs to be changed. That's according to the European Parliament. HARP has links with 50 years of intensive space research for military purposes, including the Star Wars project. For all the youthful people out there, look for Ronald Reagan Star Wars project, not the movie, although that explains quite a lot. And at the time of this report release, Based on the conventions that were around at the time, HARP is in breach of international law, or would be in breach of international law if it was investigated. So, 1999, the European Parliament has serious concerns about the American military's weapon called HARP, based in Kokona, Alaska, established. Now we move over to 2002 and the UK Parliament, where there was a debate in the Commons is stated, I have another concern that is discussed only rarely. We have heard of Star Wars, but other weapons are being planned and may exist. A very interesting one is HARP. The Americans view it as having innocent intentions, but it terrifies the Soviet Union and many other countries because its effect has been described as boiling the ionosphere. Terrible weapons might exist beyond the ones of which we are aware. That's the UK Parliament. Quite a strong statement from an MP. So we've just come ahead then 10 years. The public that did know something spoke out, obviously, and started to spread information and make sure that those, as mentioned by the European Parliament, that didn't have a clue about this, started to have a clue and get an idea of what was going on. 2010. Radio Free Europe, Russian scholar warns of secret US climate change weapon. In the article, Arashev voiced suspicions about the high frequency active auroral research program funded by the US Defense Department and the Union of Alaska. HARP, which has long been the target of conspiracy theorists, analyzes the ionosphere and seeks to develop technologies to improve radio communications, surveillance, and missile detection. So I'm sh I hope you picked up on that straight away. The title in bold to this section, Conspiracy Theories. Second paragraph, HARP, which has long been the target of conspiracy theorists. So in 1999, I'm not gonna repeat what the European Parliament was saying. 2002, the UK Parliament, showing quite some concerns. By 2010, so a good four or five years into people utilizing the internet, forums, and of course the newly developing social networking platform, it's a conspiracy theory, right? So for those of you that have kind of maybe been looking at this for five years, trying to piece all the information together, and you have been bombarded with the term conspiracy theory, take note of how 
the European Parliament didn't mention conspiracy theory when they were talking about it, nor did the UK Parliament. There's been um, a NATO plane spraying again over the UK. Should be quite a bit of information out there if you go looking for it. Some interesting pictures, usual stuff. Just wanted to rem remind people uh, this happened in Lincolnshire in 2012, Lincolnshire, UK. And this from the Spalding Guardian, from the Internet Archive. I mentioned at the beginning that I'm going to do some historical stuff and it kind of ties in with modern stuff. I've got a lot of bookmarks, I've got a lot of data and a lot of information. And I've been recently going through the archives and I thought, I know, I'll go over some recent stuff from before I started these videos, take in some information that maybe I haven't covered before. And I've had to use the Internet Archive for quite a lot of it. There is a lot of information no longer on the Internet. So for those of you that recently seen the NATO plane cir circle spraying in the UK, I've put a link into the article from the Spalding Guardian from 2012 talking about a mysterious plane which has been circling the sky above South Holland this morning has been confirmed as NATO standard training exercise. I watched this happen. It didn't look standard to me. I can tell you. 11 years ago, 2010, in everyone's favourite, The Guardian, the powerful coalition that wants to engineer the world's climate. So it's not just a coalition that wants to engineer the world's climate. Let's just be clear. Okay? It's a powerful coalition. It has power. It's going to do stuff. It's a coalition that's going to do stuff. It's going to engineer the world's climate. 2010. Mentioned in 2010, a name you'll be very familiar with currently, especially due to the Bill Gates thing that happened in uh, Sweden recently, Scopex. It all gets connected to Harvard, doesn't it? David Keith of the University of Calgary. Ah, before Harvard. So we remember the University of Calgary thing with David Keith in the time before he was at Harvard. And the article also mentions um, Bill Gates. Gates is also an investor in a firm named Intellectual Ventures that is promoting a scheme called Stratoshield, which would pump sulphur dioxide into the upper atmosphere through a 30 kilometer hose held aloft by V-shaped blimps. Gates is not the only billionaire Lone Ranger who wants to save the planet. Richard Branson has set up his own war room. He wants to bring market-driven solutions to climate change, including geoengineering. So back to Bill Gates' strato shield, 30 kilometer hoses, V-shaped blimps, spraying carbon dioxide into the upper atmosphere. Those of you that watch the recent videos, say the last four or five, will know that I've mentioned Spice. It was cancelled in Norfolk. It's kind of that's after this. Strato Shield became Spice. Spice became Scopex. Scopex has just been cancelled in Sweden. You're tying that now together for 12 years. So back over to the Internet Archive. Grants for research are provided to the University of Calgary. Remember that name just now from David Keith from gifts made by Mr. Bill Gates from his personal funds. The activities of the Fund for Innovative Climate and Energy Research fall outside the scope of activities of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. FICER is not a foundation project and has no relationship with it. So to be clear, the donations to the University of Calgary are not via the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they're from Mr. Bill Gates, from his personal funds. So just be clear, it's not Bill Gates, but it is Bill Gates. Okay, everyone clear on that? It's not Bill Gates, but it is Bill Gates. Cool. Moving on. What is the source and the size of the fund? Who administers the fund? Let's see. Since its incep inception in 2007, FICER has given out grants to 13 research projects and various scientific meetings totaling $4.6 million. Internationally known climate scientists Dr. David Keefe of the University of Calgary and Dr. Ken Caldera 
of the Carnegie Institution select projects that receive support from the fund. While Mr Gates provides input from time to time on the fund, Doctors Keith and Caldera make final decisions on projects. So once again, Mr Gates, it's nothing to do with it, but he is to do with it. And coincidentally, which you coincidence theorists are going to love, some of the funding supports research projects of Doctors Keith and Caldera, and some supports projects outside their institutions. Hmm. So they're not funding it, they are. And no one receives any money, but they do. And it's all very innocent. So it's probably not, is it? I mean, if you need to bypass governments in Sweden, etc. Mm, we'll stick with knots. So another doesn't seem to be there anymore article. People must need server space nowadays, I guess. Time in partnership with CNN. Geoengineering, a quick clean fix. This is from 2010. The article had to get it from the Internet Archive, as mentioned. There's only one capture of it from the 16th of November 2010. So that must have disappeared quick. From 2011, in the Israel National News, Ajad, West blocked rain clouds. Iranian leader threatens legal action against European countries that blocked the rain using special equipment. Iranian president said Thursday morning that unnamed Western countries are causing droughts in some areas of the world, including Iran. Speaking at an inauguration ceremony, Ahmadinejad said some European countries using special equipment have prevented rain clouds from reaching certain eastern areas, including the Persian Islamic State. I believe this company, Evergreen, they've been in the news recently, can't remember where, from Arizona Skywatch, it's also from about 2011, by the way. Evergreen Aviation admits to chemtrail contracts with the US Air Force. On their own website in the market section for their new super tanker, they state weather modification among other interesting service markets. So, over to Evergreen. And Evergreen Aviation, their super tanker section, where it indeed does mention weather modification as what it's useful for. 2011. Northland New Zealand Chemtrails Watch Alleged assassination attempts on anti-chemtrails human rights defender This guy is speaking out from Belgrade An alleged assassination attempt was committed by someone in a car with a police license on the life of a well-known green movement and anti-chemtrail worker So some YouTube clips you might find interesting to watch From 2012 Betty, 85 years old from North London, discusses chemtrails on the Jam Noise channel. Tanker enemy video, German military exposed. A secretly recorded conversation with a chemtrail pilot. If you've never seen this, it's imperative. It's one to really add to your files. US Air Force environmental specialist Kristen Megan blows whistle on Air Force chemtrails chemicals chemtrail chemicals really is worth a listen worth a watch and just to mention if by any chance you had clicked on that buy me a coffee link before i didn't realize it was set automatically to start at five pound or something which is like about seven dollars huge amount <laughs> for what i'm worth ten cents say hey, five cents if that but anyway um i've put it to a more reasonable one pound just so you know.